the question is often, what is the appropriate workup for a, a new head and neck cancer patient? The otolaryngologist is usually the first physician uh, or specialist uh, on the treatment team to meet this patient. Uh, the patient usually goes to the PCP or sometimes a dentist uh, with a lump in the neck or a sore throat or an ulcer in the mouth. Uh, they're then referred on to uh, usually a, a near nose and throat uh, otolaryngologist. Um, uh, some of these tumors present with a lump in the neck. Uh, the man may notice, you know, while shaving. It turns out this disease is more prevalent, uh, about three to one uh, in males. Uh, so that's why I bring up this. It's very common to say, oh, I just noticed this while shaving, and that's the first sign. Um, so that's uh, a neck mass in an adult. Is, um, cancer until proven otherwise. We kind of pound that into our trainees and to the community. So when the patient arise, uh, arrives in the office of the otolaryngologist, a complete head and neck exam is conducted. This includes uh, a mirror exam looking at all mucosal surfaces, um, usually a digital uh, finger manual examination to feel for any masses or lumps, and then often a flexible nasopharyngoscopy where we slide a a fiber optic telescope through the nostril or uh, other uh, strategy to look at the voice box in the base of the tongue and the, and the hypopharynx. We can't see below the level of the vocal cords or into the esophagus. For HPV negative cancers, we're concerned about potential synchronous second primary tumors. And so often we'll uh, uh, perform imaging, we'll look in the esophagus uh, and perform what's called a pan endoscopy in the operating room. For HPV positive patients, never smokers, there's a less, less frequent chance of second primary tumors. But a uh, contrasted, uh, intravenous contrasted CAT scan of the neck usually uh, ensues. A needle biopsy to document uh, that it's in fact a squamous cell carcinoma, since one could have a thyroid cancer with a lump in the neck, a salivary gland cancer, and occasionally uh, cancers in the lung or breast can actually metastasize to the lower neck uh, in the supraclavicular fossa. So one really needs to document that it's a squamous cell carcinoma in order to narrow it down to the mucosal surfaces to find the primary site. From a needle biopsy, one can usually test for HPV. Uh, oftentimes these days we use a surrogate marker uh, uh, immunohistochemistry for the P16 protein, which is dramatically upregulated when the tumor is HPV positive, so we use that surrogate. And you can do that from a needle biopsy. That would help the clinician to narrow the search for the primary site to the base of the tongue and the tonsil uh, and, and help avoid biopsies unnecessarily from regions that really don't have HPV. Uh, in addition to CAT scans, one uh, may get, uh, for advanced stages, a uh, PET CT, positron emission tomography, overlaid with a CAT scan, so you have a co-registered scan with both PET and CT, so you get functional as well as anatomic imaging. Uh, often that's useful to identify the primary site, the extent of disease, other lymph nodes, maybe on the other side of the neck, uh, and then often with a PET CT you get the benefit of uh, ruling out excluding distant metastasis in the lungs or the liver. Um, it's not been proven whether a PET-CT is uh, uh, really clearly better than a contrasted neck CAT scan and a chest CAT scan. That's, there's probably two standards of care in the workup. Oftentimes, the otolaryngologist will take the patient to the operating room to perform endoscopy under anesthesia, not just uh, the sort of uh, exam we can get in the office. And so this is really the workup to accurately perform a clinical staging. Pathologic staging, uh, can differ, sometimes upstaging and downstaging. That usually requires a surgical therapeutic approach, including removal of the lymph nodes, since even in a clinically negative neck, based on a CAT scan, there will be metastatic disease, micrometastasis 20 to 30 percent of the time. So we can't rely on PET scans or CAT scans to do the accurate nodal staging. We have to remove lymph nodes to get uh, the accurate pathologic staging. There are multiple factors that go into prognosis for the head and neck cancer patient. Let's start with staging. Obviously, worse stage is worse, but head and neck cancer has a really funny staging system. In almost every other cancer, stage four means metastatic or incurable disease. This is not the case for most stage four head and neck cancer. Most stage four head and neck cancer is actually locally advanced and we cure stage four all the time. 
A little bit more useful is the TNM staging system, T being uh, relevant to the size of this tumor. This is actually different for the different subtypes of head and neck cancer. The end system is somewhat useful, describing the nodal burden. A node under three centimeters is N1. Um, N2 is a node between uh, three and under six centimeters. If you get into multiple lymph nodes on the same side of the neck, that's N2B. N2C reflects uh, bilateral disease. And N3 is any node greater than six centimeters. Just about all locally advanced disease will be stage three and stage four. Obviously, worse, worse stage is worse. There's also a difference in prognosis by site of origin. For example, uh, carcinomas of the lip tend to convey a superior prognosis, where the hypopharynx and larynx are a little bit worse. Finally, the biology is relevant here. Um, in particular, we're talking about HPV. Some cancers are driven by this virus as opposed to smoking, and the virally driven cancers have a better prognosis than the smoking-driven cancers. The prognostic impact uh, in head and neck cancer is important because patients want to know, and it helps us to design uh, appropriately intensified therapy based on the potential for a good uh, or worse outcome. So it turns out that the strongest prognostic factor uh, in head and neck cancer is the presence of uh, HPV infection. Uh, that gives a dramatically uh, better prognosis if the tumor is HPV driven. Something like an 80% two-year disease-free uh, survival versus 40, for instance. It's really quite dramatic, 30 or 40% difference in overall survival. Now, there are some modifiers. The uh, smoking status of the patient and heavy smokers who are HPV positive have a less good prognosis. And so a never smoker may have a 90 to 92% survival. Uh, a smoker HPV positive patient may have a 65 to 70 percent survival, and then you have the HPV negative patient with a 40 to 45 percent survival. So smoking impacts. The extent of disease, the bulk of disease contributes. So T4, uh, advanced uh, primary tumor, uh, extensive nodal disease on both sides of the neck, an N2C, or a big lymph node greater than six centimeters, which we call an N3. Those patients, even when HPV positive, uh, are called intermediate risk and have a worse outcome than the uh, patients with lower bur disease burden that are never smokers. And that's where you get the over 90% uh, 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 survival. The tumor heterogeneity likely it plays an important role. The more heterogeneous a tumor, the more difficult it will be to treat, uh, the more likely uh, escape uh, subsets, subclones of the tumor. Uh, can arise and you might cure 90 to 95 percent of the, the tumor, but because of heterogeneity, then uh, have uh, an outgrowth of resistant cells and, and, and have recurrence. So tumor heterogeneity uh, through uh, genomic analysis is just emerging as an important feature. Uh, and there are some scores out there that quantify uh, the uh, heterogeneity genomically. That's important. P53 alteration. Uh, has been demonstrated to be a poor prognostic factor. In particular, uh, a particular a, a, a subset of HPV positive mutations that are called disruptive mutations that really interfere with the effect of p53 as the guardian of the genome, preventing further alterations in DNA damage uh, and preventing the cell from dividing and replicating if there is a lot of DNA damage. And these disruptive mutations occur about 20 or 25 percent of the time they appear to do much worse uh, than the non-disruptive mutations or where p53 is wild type. So we can look at genetic means for characterizing prognosis uh, through single alterations like p53. We can aggregate them and say the more heterogene uh, heterogeneous a tumor is, the worse a patient will do. But overall, uh, the most powerful prognostic factor is HPV status. One question is, uh, if, if you believe that there's tumor heterogeneity, should we biopsy different areas of the tumor? Uh, I wouldn't say that's considered standard practice. Uh, I don't think we really transmit that to our trainees at present. These data are emerging. Um, and we can identify tumor heterogeneity even with the small biopsies we traditionally have taken. This information comes from small biopsies that, uh, from tissue that was in our tissue banks. So um, 
what we don't need to biopsy multiple areas of the tumor just to find the heterogeneity. We can actually identify it in the small pieces that we take routinely.